Hi, this is another example of how to do a Venn diagram problem. This is a little different type of problem than the last one. So let's jump right in and read it. It says, a survey was given asking whether people like espresso and or chocolate. People could check one or both boxes. Use the results to draw a Venn diagram and determine how many people did not like either chocolate or espresso. Okay, so we know 150 people were surveyed. 132 people liked chocolate, 96 people liked espresso, and 78 people checked both boxes. One thing you might notice right away is these numbers add up to more than 150, don't they? So how is that possible? Let's draw. Remember, we always want to include the box because that is represents the universal set. And then here we have just two different things chocolate or espresso, whereas in the previous one we had three different things. We had three circles. This one we will have two circles or two sets. Okay, so let's label these. One will be chocolate, liking chocolate, and the other will be liking espresso. Okay, um, 150 people were surveyed. We know these are all going to add up to 150. 132 people liked chocolate. Well, we don't know exactly where they're going to fit because these folks like chocolate only. These people like chocolate and espresso. So we can't use this number yet. The same thing with the 96. We don't know the people that checked espresso. They also could have checked the other box for chocolate, which would put them in here. So we actually have to work sometimes from the bottom up or the inside out. 78 people checked both boxes, different color. So we know the intersection, 78 people checked both, okay? Now we could do either chocolate or espresso. Let's do chocolate first. So 132 is talking about both of these regions. So in order to find the people that only liked chocolate, we need to subtract 78. Okay, you can do it in your head or on paper. I have my phone calculator here. So that means 54 people liked chocolate only. They liked chocolate and then 78 liked both. Together that adds up to 132. So if we put the 132 in here, which is tempting, our numbers would be way too big because when we add them all up, we would have more than 150 people. And we don't want to count anyone twice. So then we can do the same thing for espresso, 96 minus 78, what is that? So in here, 18. Okay. Notice that each person, think about each person doing the survey, they can only go in one space. They can only fit here, 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 and then the last region is the outside, which is reserved for none of these, okay? So that brings us to our question, how do we find how many people liked none of these, which we usually put in the lower right corner or somewhere in the, um, in the universal set, or the, uh, which is all the people that took the survey. Um, so what do we know so far? We know these three numbers and we know that 150 people were surveyed. So there's a couple different ways you can go about it. You can try it if you want, pause it and then check. Um, we know there's 150 total. So if I subtract 54, subtract 78 and subtract 18, then that should tell me what is left. zero. So it came out to exactly zero. Um, everyone liked either chocolate or espresso, um, which is very interesting. I'm sure there's people out there that don't like either one. It just happens that no one in this survey um, checked either one. So 
Um, in this problem, we had to subtract. So a question I have for you is, what's different in this problem than in the television, internet, and newspaper example? In other words, how will you know when to subtract? Um, the TV, internet, and newspaper one was a little bit different because we were given the numbers here. We were given the numbers with the Venn diagrams. But combining with these descriptions we made, we can kind of see the difference. So this uh, region here that we shaded is for TV only, and that is 20 people, right? So if, if one of our clues said 20 people got their news from television only, we wouldn't have to subtract anything because television only is referring to a single region. Um, but if we got something, if we had a clue that said how many people uh, sorry, that said um, 71 people use the internet to get their news, then that's referring to this entire circle. So we would have to subtract. So if I got my answer from here, that number from here, 71. If they told us 71, we couldn't put that in any one of these boxes. We'd have to work from the inside out to figure out how many did all three, how many were TV and internet, but not newspapers and vice versa, and how many were internet only. So the wording, there's some very subtle wording in these questions to watch out for. If it says how many people use the internet, that is not talking about the other things, the TV and the newspapers. So that represents four regions in this case, one, two, three, four. Um, versus if it said like TV only, that's a single region or TV and internet only is this single region right here. And then um, if it says how many people liked chocolate or espresso, we had to subtract because um, we had to take into account that intersection first, okay? So let's see, you might wanna write your own answer to this question. What's different in this problem? How will you know when to subtract? Um, We subtract when the number given, or a number given, represents more than one region. In the Venn diagram, or of the Venn diagram. Okay, so for example, chocolate, or let's say likes chocolate, is two spaces or two regions. But if it said likes chocolate only, that is only one region. Can I fit this in here? That's only one region. Um, checking both boxes, that's only one region. That's why we were able to do that one first. Okay, well, I hope this will help you distinguish between the two different um, types of Venn diagram problems, and I'll see you in the next video.